This page was created to teach black history. Unfortunately, the American educational system was designed to exclude our real historical account. So we are here to dismantle it. It's time to enlighten those of us who have been kept in the dark. I am a black man who didn't know enough about my own history. So I began to dig deeper and do my own research. Black history is American history. So I want people of all races and cultures to join together to learn our history as one. Here, I will share all of my findings. Please like, follow, share, and subscribe to Teaching Black History. The story of Wes Brady. Wes Brady was born in Alabama in 1849. His father, Peter Calloway, and mother, Harriet Ellis, brought the whole family to Texas by nigger traders. He had two brothers and four sisters. We niggers lived in log houses and slept on hay mattresses and ate fat pork and cornbread, said Wes. They wore the same clothes all year and never had shoes on with a string tied around the bottom of their shirts for a belt. Wes would go hunting in the woods for his master to collect squirrels. The overseer would saddle his big horse at three o'clock in the morning, roasting the hands off to the field. He would get them all lined up and then come back to the house for breakfast. The rose was a mile long and no matter how much grass was in them, if you leaves one spring on your roll, they would beat you nearly to death. Lots of times they weighed cotton by candlelight. All the hands took dinner to the fields in buckets and the overseer give them 15 minutes to eat dinner. He'd start cuffing some of them over the head when it was time to stop eating and go back to work. He'd go to the house and eat his dinner and then he'd come back and look in all the buckets if a piece of anything that was there when he left was eight, he'd say he was losing time and had to be whipped. He'd drive four stakes in the ground and tie a nigger down and beat him till his skin was raw. Then he'd take a brick and grind it up in a powder and mix it with lard and put it all over him and roll him in a sheet. It would be two days or more before that nigger could work again. One slave was caught stealing a meat bone from the meat house and got 1,500 lashes. Wes often seen draping corn. He was also a cow pen boy and sheep herder. All the slaves had to shell a half bristle of corn every night to feed the sheep. Many times he walked through the quarters crying for his mother, who he mostly only saw on Sundays. One time the stock got in the field and the overseer, an old man, and jumps on him and breaks his neck and the old man died. The next day they went to church and the preacher said, Obey your massa and missy. Don't steal chickens and eggs and meat. The preacher knew this would help save lives. They would have parties on Saturday nights and their master would come out and show them new dance steps. Wes's father was sent off to war but never came back. Their master got sick and died about six months before they got free. Wes and his mother went on to farming for themselves. I wore myself out right in this country and now I'm too old to work, said Wes. The government gave him $11 a month to live on before he died in 1937. He is included in the Federal Writers Project Slave Narrative Collection.